Hey everyone, my name is Amy and welcome to Amy Codes. So this week I will be teaching you how to back up your original Linux distro if your machine will only boot to a grub terminal. Um, I believe this is happening for me because the original um, install that I did, I used with the application UNet boot in and that's not compatible with the UEF UEFI boot mode. Um, I will also be teaching you how to re-image your um, machine as well uh, because there will be issues there. So stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is figure out which partition is our current Linux distro. So let's do it with an LS. We can see we have a few partitions here. We have GPT-3. GPT-2 and GPT-1. I'm going to go ahead and ls into the GPT-1 um, directory and see what's inside. ls hd0 GPT-1 Here we can see that we have the EFI directory inside. Um, let's go ahead and do the same for GPT-2. Awesome. So this is definitely a Linux distro. It'll look something like this. We'll have, you know, a boot directory, an etc directory, a temp directory, a dev home root, anything that you would normally see within um, the uh, your Linux distro. So let's go ahead and set the root to our current partition that we just found out. So set root equals hd0 gpt2 what this does is it sets um, the root environment variable as the base of your Linux partition that you just found um, next let's go ahead and do set prefix equals hd0 gpt2 slash boot slash grub so what we're doing here is we're indicating the location of our grub directory. After that, let's do ins mod normal. So what the ins mod command does is that it inserts a module into your Linux kernel. So in this case, what we're loading is the normal module that can be found under a prefix variable that we set up above. So the modules are usually under a different directory, so let's go ahead and figure out, you know, which, um, where our normal module is. I'm going to show you with this. So I'm going to use some tab completion to show you that it's there instead of listing everything out. Um, so let's do a um, ls hd0 gpt2 slash boot slash EFI or sorry uh, slash boot slash grub so what we can see here is this directory and this is actually where all our modules are located so I'm going to do some tab completion and show you that the normal module is located under that directory so x tab completion normal mod and here you can see uh, the normal module loaded beneath that um, next what we want to do, so let's go ahead and uh, delete that line. So next what we want to do is type out normal. So what the normal command does is it enters the normal mode and it will display your grub menu. In this case, um, it was what was just shown there. And um, this was read from the prefix that you set and grub.cfg. So now we're in and we can see that our Linux distro is loading up in just one second. Um, and it's still loading, but um, when you get in, what you're able to do is back up your data and we can get ready to re-image your machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait until it loads up to show you that it actually does. Give it a few seconds here. By the way, if you have any questions about any of this, please hit me up on my Twitter that will, I will link the link below. And here, great, you can see that I can, you know, like go into my normal Linux distro that I had before.
Um, I'm going to enter in. Awesome, and I'm in. So what I want to be able to do from here is then just back up any you know, data that I have and then re-image my machine to be able to fix it. So the next thing that you want to do is create a USB live bootable stick um, with the ISO that you want. So right now you should go ahead and plug in your USB. On the left you can see that I've done that here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out where this USB is mounted. So I'm going to type out disk util list. Here we can see that our USB is mounted on dev disk 3. It could vary um, from machine to machine. And uh, we could tell that because it says external physical, which means that it's the USB that I mounted. The next thing that I want to do is actually unmount my USB. This is not the same as hitting eject on here, because if I hit eject uh, this USB, it'll actually turn off the power to that USB, and that's not what I want. Um, what I want to do is disk util unmount disk dash dev dash disk three. So I'm unmounting this USB. Great, so unmount all the volumes on disk three was successful. Great, so now that we've unmounted our disk, we're ready to put our um, ISO onto our USB and create a live bootable stick. I've already actually downloaded the ISO that I want. Uh, today I'm trying to download CentOS 7 onto my USB. Um, but in case that's not clear on how to do it, what you do is go to your respective Linux operating system website um, and then just you know follow their steps and click on the uh, ISO that you're interested in. So um, since I've already done that, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I downloaded my ISO. And I've done that in the downloads folder. Let's do an ls to show you where it is. So here we can see that I downloaded CentOS 7, x86, 64, everything. Um, and in order to download that, I'm going to do sudo dd if, oops, if equals, and then the name of my download, so CentOS, um, and also of equals uh, dash dev dash disk three, and then block size equals 4K. Enter my password. Great. So this means that um, my laptop is already gone ahead and transferred this ISO onto my USB. So this will probably take a little while, um, but when it finishes, it will output um, the number of bytes that were put into the stick. And I'll show you that in a second. Great, so our uh, ISO has finished downloading. We can see that, you know, here's the records in, records out. It took 3,797 seconds. So that's a bit over an hour, just to give you a general idea of how long this takes. Definitely be patient. Um, it's working if there's just, you know, this little blinking cursor. Um, and we're ready to re-image our machine. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do before we put in our USB stick is change our BIOS settings to boot off of the USB first. So uh, depending on your uh, computer, you have to click you know, one of the keys to make sure that it uh, boots into BIOS. For me, I have a VIO, so I click the F2 button while I am turning on my machine. All right. And here we can see that we've entered our BIOS menu. So what we want to do is change our boot order. So I want to enable the external device boot, so enable that. Uh, my boot mode is UEFI. Our boot priority, I'm going to change the external device to the top. So move that up. Awesome, let's see. And that should be it. And then I'm going to save and exit. Also, um, on the right here, I've plugged in my USB drive, so go ahead and make sure to do that too. So now, save and exit is F10. 
And now it should boot into my USB stick and I'm able to install whatever operating system I want from the ISO that I created. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching and if that helped you out, please hit the subscribe button below and give me a like. Um, another thing is I'll also be linking a blog post below with more detailed explanation of what just happened in case you couldn't follow along in the video. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.